while your day is winding down, they're just getting started. This is South Coast Tonight with Chris McCarthy and Marcus Farrow. They've got you covered on all the news of the day, from local issues to politics on both sides of the aisle. This is the place where the movers and shakers come to be heard, to listen, and where they're held accountable. This is South Coast Tonight on WBSM. Welcome. Welcome to South Coast tonight. I'm Marcus Farrow. 508 996 is how you can join me this evening. Uh, Chris and I had a great show last night with the no guest format. We'll return to having regularly scheduled amazing guests Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But tonight we're, we're going to go no guest again. Uh, just I want to talk to you guys if you want to talk to me. I mean, you can let me monologue for three hours too. That, that's fine. I can do it. I'm capable of doing that. But if you want to, if you want to talk to me, you can at five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred, or you can message uh, on the WBSM app chat. So those are your options. But something, some major development this that happened today. I don't think got a ton of coverage during the day um but i would like to talk to it uh i would like to talk about it a little bit myself um you can go to wbsm.com and check out the story on by the way i've got an article on wbsm.com uh the interview that chris and i have had with lieutenant governor kim driscoll uh, we talked mostly about housing policy, but we talked about a lot of stuff. We talked about offshore wind. We talked about, um, Chris asked a question about Sergeant Mike Cassidy. We also discussed the Community Preservation Act because she was the mayor of Salem. And she enacted the Community Preservation Act when she was mayor of Salem. She talks about how helpful that was. Um, I had asked her that in light of the city council threatening the Community Preservation Act, this ballot question that fell from the sky. Um you can uh, check out that article on WBSM.com. I would encourage you to do that. Um, it does help, actually, the show a lot. If you if you do uh, visit the column on, or article on WBSM.com, look, it's real easy. Go to WBSM.com. That's the show. And you can just go, you can go to On Air. You click on Marcus Farrow. That, that's me. That's me. That's my name. You click there, and you bam. You you get all of the stuff that that uh, all the stuff that that I wrote with the content that Chris and I are making. All the stuff that that, that we're writing here on WBSM.com. The very first one is that is that piece with with Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll. So Tim was talking about that earlier today. It's worth mentioning. Uh, helps the programming out a lot. It helps our content out a lot if we can show that there's interest. And we know that there's interest in it. But the more the merrier in terms of uh, getting there. And you know what? We work hard on it. So uh, we want as many people to read it as possible, uh, to put their eyes on it as possible. So go check that out. We'd really appreciate it. It means a lot. You can also go to... I promise I'm not going to spend the first hour talking about how to access online content. But <laughs> while I'm on the subject, you can also go to you can also go to wbsm.com. You can go to the listen tab. You can go to on demand, and you can click South Coast tonight. And bam! Every hour that we've ever recorded, all like 500 hours, I think, that we've ever recorded. Um, are available for your listening pleasure, along with my articles and Chris's articles. So you can check that out. 
um, on WBSM.com or the app. The app's pretty easy too. The app, everything's there. It's, you know, easy to access. You can press podcast and all of that. It works out pretty well. But anyway, 508-996-0500. That's how you can join us this evening. We'll also take your messages on the WBSM app. But one of the stories that you can uh, that you can read other than the one, the, the story that we recently wrote with our inter- interview with the Lieutenant Governor is the story that Datco, the bus company, the only, as of right now, the only direct transportation from Greater New Bedford, so people in Dartmouth, Fairhaven, et cetera, the only transportation from the South Coast to Boston, direct, uh, is going offline in one month, less than one month now. Because apparently they made the announcement on March 17th. They had a March 17th statement. They said, as of April 16th, so if you ride the Datco bus, hopefully you, you know, you may, you you already know about this. If not, I'll let you know now. If you ride the Datco bus to Boston, and we know that there's a lot of commuters who ride the Datco bus to Boston, then your, that service that you've been, not, you know, enjoying, but not really enjoying, but relying on is going to end abruptly in less than a month. And so this was the last community. I I learned this actually from Ben Burke uh, on the public's radio. He, He tweeted this out. This is the last bus service in the South Coast to, uh, lose its, um, transit to Boston. So basically, Peter Pan uh, bus service used to go from Fall River to Boston. They shut that down at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic and have never picked that back up. And Bloom bus lines did the same thing in Taunton. They cut off their bus service, their direct ride to the South Coast as well. And now you have Datco doing the same. Now, what's What's striking about this situation is that it's very, very abrupt, right? This was a March 17th statement. I don't know who picked it up, but Kate, Kate picked it up because she's a good, she's a great news person, but she brought it to you guys as soon as she could. But it was very abrupt. And basically what they said is, well, we gave the, we gave the 30 days notice as per required by the Department of Public Utilities, right? We're only required to give 30 days notice. Now, this decision, it's a major decision. So it was not made on a whim. There's been there's been a direct bus service from New Bedford to Boston since I think 2014. So almost 10 years now. So this wasn't to end this 10-year bus service with or 9-year bus service was not made randomly, sporadically, arbitrarily. They've been thinking about doing this for a while. But they then just recently decided that they were just going to announce it. They were going to let DPU know, the Department of Public Utilities, say, hey, we we gave our 30 days notice. And then not tell the city of New Bedford, not tell any of the surrounding communities that they were going to do it ahead of time. And it's left the region, the city and the region, scrambling for uh, an alternative direct service to Boston. I know a lot of people who have and continue to rely on that mode of transportation to get to greater Boston. And the statement in response, you know, what they said basically was um, Datco. This is their, this was their quote. Um, Unfortunately, we have not found a solution that would provide cost effective commute option for you. Our, uh, our passengers while overcoming the deficit we've been, uh, we have, been experiencing for several years. I don't know if that's a result of the pandemic or um, but they said they were, it's a decision we've struggled for for several months. So so they admit as much they've been thinking about it for a while. This is a decision we have struggled with for several months as we looked at options to both reduce our operating costs and increase fares substantially. 
So they admit they've been talking about this for a while. Now, they didn't want to bring this up to anybody, apparently, for whatever reason, um, like the city. And they, they admitted as such that they didn't bring it up. They didn't talk to the city or any really local officials about um, what exactly they were going to do. They just said they gave the 30 days required by uh, P, uh, DPU. Um, they did say that they, this is according to Tim Dunn, who used to work here uh, at WBSM, but now he works at WBZ up in Boston. But um, he, he said that the that they, DATCO has engaged with the city through the years and said the route is no longer profitable the route is no longer profitable, uh, citing inflation and increased gas costs. Okay. Well, but here's what's really, I think, the most interesting part of what the DATCO VP said about cutting this, this service off from New Bedford to Boston. He said, this is what he said to Tim Dunn. Quote, political bodies in southeastern Massachusetts have made it clear they want rail service. So here's what's strange about that. It's a jab at South Coast Rail for one reason or another, saying, well, political bodies here want rail service. Well, here's what's troubling about that statement. Every transportation expert I've talked to, and I've talked to a few, I've talked to them on air, you know, I've talked to people like Chris Dempsey, who was the chair of transportation for Massachusetts, also a candidate for state auditor. I've also talked with um, his successor, of tra uh, the executive director of transportation for Massachusetts. I've also talked to uh, Josh Ostroff. I've also talked to Jake Ockenkloss, who's, you know, a congressman and uh, is a transportation expert, worked in transportation prior to... Um, prior to being in Congress and is sits on the House Transportation Committee helped put together that infrastructure bill. And none of them and no other transportation expert or, or any transportation authority that I've heard from has said that South Coast Rail or any rail service is going to happen to make bus service obsolete. And in fact, I actually went back and listened to an old interview I had with Chris Dempsey at Transportation for Massachusetts, and he had said, bus service is actually something that works in conjunction with rail service to lessen the problem of traffic congestion. So traffic congestion is a major issue. Uh, I think if anybody who's driven up to Boston knows what traffic congestion is, and it is what it sounds like. It's a basically bottlenecking of vehicles, of vehicle traffic going into the highway, you know. So you know, you're staring at brake lights on 93. That's traffic congestion. Boston's one of the most congested cities in the entire country, if not the most congested. It's consistently among the top two or three most traffic congested cities in the entire country country commuters i think lose on average about three grand per year in wages uh i think the boston economy loses a few billion dollars um from traffic congestion uh and actually failure to bring the mbta to a state of good repair but no one's ever said we need south coast rail or we need rail so that we can get rid of datco I don't, no one's ever said that. If someone, I would be surprised if someone can bring me a comment from an elected official because said political bodies have said they want rail service. It's a weird thing to say. And it's kind of like this, I think, sort of cover up for the, I think, disaster that DATCO is bringing to local commuters by just shutting off this rail service immediately. I mean, shutting off this transit service immediately because. I can't think of a single elected official who has said, I can't wait to get rid of, I can't wait to, I can't wait to get, get South Coast Rail here so we can get rid of DATCO or we can get rid of bus service. And in fact, 
you know, any any conversation about bus service in relation to rail service or South Coast Rail is saying those things complement each other. Because sort of the point of this is to, one, make a commute to Boston easier, and two, bring fewer cars onto the highway, right? And you bring fewer cars onto the highway with both bus and rail. Every person in that bus or on that train is one fewer car that is on Route 24. So he's bringing up something that, and, and again, I would be surprised if, uh, if someone could bring me a quote from John Mitchell or Bill Strauss, the transportation chair, or anybody um, that says, hey, we need to get rid of DATCO. And the way we do that is South Coast Rail. Not to mention the fact that South Coast Rail, as of now, is slated to arrive here in 2023. I mean, the end of 2023 in December. So it's a good thing that it's arriving this year, but it's still leaving commuters with about eight or so months, eight or so months without an alternative route without a way to get up to Boston. A lot of people may choose to drive now that the bus service is gone in the interim, but a lot of people take the bus service because they can't drive for one reason or another. Either they're unable to for some reason, um, they're unable to drive, they don't have a car, right? They can't afford a car. So they take the bus service up to Boston. 508-996-0500 is how you can get on the program. Also take your messages on the WBSM app chat. Tell you what, I'm going to take a break now. When we get back, we'll take some calls, read some app chat messages. Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Marcus. 508-996-0500 is how you can get in the show, uh, program this evening. We'll also take your messages on the WBSM app chat. We've got some app chat messages in. Willing City Resident says, I've got a friend that commutes to Boston every day on DACO. Now she's scrambling to find out how she's going to get to her job. Yeah, I think there's uh, actually Grace Fergus, New Bedford Light. I was reading her piece. She's got, she interviewed a couple of people, that uh, one, one of whom is going to have to figure out how she can get to chemotherapy. Um, so, um, and look, I get it's a business and it's not profitable for them anymore. Um, it kind of makes you think that a lot of this stuff should just be public service anyway and shouldn't be handled by the private sector because sometimes stuff like this happens. So um, uh, John from Fairhaven asks, Marcus, do you think they're withdrawing from Boston services because the train is coming and will provide most of the transport? Maybe they're cutting their losses now instead of prolonging it. So maybe, I mean, here's the thing. He, the Dennis Lyons is the VP of DACO. Again, I don't blame them for cutting the service. I, I don't think it's, if they're not, they are a business and they have to make money again probably why a lot of this stuff shouldn't you know should be a public good anyway but um transportation in particular public transportation probably shouldn't be run by the private sector but uh but um with datco they have said they're it's not profitable for them anymore so they can't continue it right because the costs have gone up and Ridership has gone down significantly, um, I guess, even before the pandemic. But with the pandemic, it's gotten, I think, a lot worse, despite the fact that there are people that use that commuter service, you know, a non-zero amount of people. Um, they, there are also a lot of people that are working from home, working remotely, so they don't necessarily take the routes that they used to. So again, this is on New Bedford Light, but there's uh, but what Grace Ferguson reported said about 200 people a day uh, took the bus each way before, um, before like the pandemic 
or early, you know, at one point or at, at the height of its service. And, but now it's 65 passengers per day. Um, and sometimes as few as 35. So you're getting like 35 to 65 passengers per day, whereas before they were drive, uh, drive uh, 200. So part of that could be, and I, and I think that the, the VP took a, took a, you know, took a swipe at South Coast Rail. So that probably plays into their calculus a little bit, saying that, well, you know, there is no need for this service any, you know, they, they said, well, the, the public, you know, the political bodies want rail service, trying to blame it on them like it's their fault. Um, but uh, I think that is playing into their calculus a little bit. They're saying, well, people might just take rail instead of taking the bus. I haven't taken the bus service to Boston. I would probably, I feel like I'd prefer rail because there's a lot more room, but I have no idea. I have never taken bus service to Boston. I've never had to. Um, I've always reluctantly drived up there, dro- driven up there. Um, when I've had to go up there for certain reasons, I used to work there. I used to have, a, I used to have office space there for my uh, law practice, but um, I always drove up, uh, and I hated it. I still hate it. I drove up there the other uh, a month ago, and I, I still hate it. I still hate driving up there. And actually, when the tri- rail service comes, I'm looking forward to trying it out. But um, yeah, I think that plays into the calculus a little bit. I think them saying, well, you know, if we're getting 35 to 65 uh, passengers a day, maybe rail service is going to cut into that a little bit. And then it's not as profitable. I still think, again, that... And they're looking for, I guess, Datco and, and New Bedford. They're both looking for the city, uh, the Mass Dot, to try to fill that gap because um, the train's supposed to come in December. So they're ending service in April. So they've asked Mass Dot to continue the service, and Mass Dot has basically said, um, "Sorry, <laughs> sorry, no can do." Um, they say, uh, yeah, um, as much as MassDOT would like to see community service continue, it doesn't have an existing funding source to support the services and operations. It isn't able to provide any assistance at this time. So, again, you wonder if there probably should be more funding directed towards a service like bus service Um, because New Bedford was the last one in this entire region and the schedule the schedule I think for DATCO is a lot more frequent than South Coast Rail is going to be so like from northbound to Boston you had you know uh, them leaving Fairhaven because it would start here in Fair, it would start over here in Fairhaven, I believe, over off of Howland Road, if I'm not mistaken, is where they'd pick where they where the first stop would be, and then they'd pick people up in at New Bedford, at um at the terminal, so they'd pick they'd start in Fairhaven, they'd pick people up at 4:50, and they'd go to New Bedford at five, and then. They'd run one at 4.50, 6.50, and 2.50. Uh, 4.50 a.m., they'd run one at 6.50 and 2.50. And then they would run another... I think they'd also run at the... They'd run through the Mount Pleasant Park and Ride. And they'd also run one at the Gallery and Mall Park and Ride. And then they'd go... I think they'd arrive... They, they would um go back. They'd stop at the Mount Pleasant one. And then they'd stop at the New Bedford one, and then they'd go to UMass Dartmouth as well. Um, but basically, every day there'd be some sort of connection from Fairhaven, Dartmouth, New Bedford, and South Station in Boston. And now we've got to wait until that rail service that rail service arrives. Maybe rail service in and of itself is going to be able to take all the commuters from. 
maybe it's going to be able to take all the commuters from this region and provide that service. I mean, you're going to have my, you know, if you get 65 people per day, I assume not all of them are going to switch to rail, right? You can't say all, every single one of them is going to switch to rail, but you wonder how many people from Fall River and Taunton uh, who lost that service back in the pandemic, what they're going to do when they have that uh, South Coast Rail available to them, uh, which again will be fully operational by December of 2023. Uh, December of 2023, I believe, is the day is when you when we're supposed to be enjoying uh, rail service to Boston. So maybe they feel like the ridership there can. Um, maybe they feel like the ridership there uh, can cover what we're going to lose with Datco. You know. Uh, some people have said, you know, because that bu- that bus get, can get stuff in tra- uh, that bus can get stuck in traffic. It can take a while, but I know a lot of people have said, "Oh, you know, when the train comes, people would rather drive." I, I really think driving into Boston sucks. It's the, <laughs> I, I mean, I really hate it. Maybe I hate it more than most people do, but it is a frustrating experience. I remember when I would have to. I remember when I would have to. Um, I'd have to leave if I had court up in Middlesex County in Cambridge I'd have to leave at 5 to make sure I even got there maybe on time for court <laughs> it was really bad 508-996-0500 good evening hey Marcus Don up in Stoughton here. hey Don how um, you doing oh, my allergies are killing me I'm sorry to hear that so if I pass out on the phone here don't worry about it somebody will find <laughs> okay. me okay yeah, no, I used to drive into Boston to go to Coin Electrical School in Boston, right in the corner of Mass Ave in Calm, mm-hmm. and uh, it was pure hell every morning. Yeah. But many years ago, the main line to Boston used to go through Stoughton here. Yeah. If you were coming out of Fall River, New Bedford, you came up <clears throat> through Raynham, Easton, you know, Taunton, Easton, et cetera, right through Stoughton, and then up over through Randolph, through Braintree, and then into Boston. Yeah. But they had express trains, Marcus. So in other words, if uh, you were a rider going all the way to, let's say, Middleborough and South, the train would not stop anywhere in between. Mm -hmm. So the first stop would be in Middleborough and then maybe down to Freetown and then New Bedford Fall River. And I'm wondering if they shouldn't do that also now coming out of uh, the South Shore, that they should have an express train. You come out of Fall River, New Bedford, the last stop is Middleborough, and then it's a straight shot into Boston. No, no further stops after that. Right. Yeah. I. I. I uh, m- maybe. Uh, maybe. I mean. I think there's. You know. There's a stop in Taunton that uh, they fought pretty hard for. So they're going to probably want to be able to have that stop. Then the stop in Freetown. Uh, I mean, you, you're going to. Je- I think to jettison the people in those those that that are the towns that are gonna, that you know set up those stops. That it might be difficult, but I, I think it might be a good idea. You know, there is a, there was a Stoughton route that was proposed. That would go Correct. through Stoughton. I think they're, they're still going to put it through, though. They they will put it through well, the, from Stoughton down to the, the biggest problem was, I guess, the Hockamock Swamp and the environmental permitting and all of that. <laughs> yeah, I know. The, the, the rail bed is already there, Marcus. You yeah. know, Marcus, without the rail bed, the Hockamock Swamp wouldn't be there because yeah. it acts as a barrier to the flow of water from the west to the east to the Taunton River. Right. So if you, if you took out the rail bed... The yeah. swamp would, as, as route, with Route 138, the swamp would disappear. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I, I, <laughs> I understand. Yeah. For the people from, let's say, uh, they could have a local express, a local train from Middleborough that would pick up people there and then stop in between, you know, Taunton, Brockton, Bridgewater, et cetera. Yeah. So th- this way here, way down south, you get an express after Middleborough. You just zoom right in. So you could be into Boston in, in less than 30 minutes. From it's, Middleborough on a train. It's not a bad idea. I think the one of the problems is is that um, I guess apparently with this route, you know, going through the Middleborough route, like the way in which logistically it works in connection with the other trains that are coming in on the different tracks, there's like right. fewer times available for it to pass through. That's the only. No, I, I understand that, but I, I don't think the the crowds, the, the passengers from the South Shore, Fall River, New Bedford would be as great so you yeah. could use a, a smaller train with fewer cars on it oh yeah and then have another train come up 
or, or just be right behind it, park to a siding, and then go from Middleborough and then back into Boston, but do all the local stops along the way. Right. Yeah. Just thinking. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a decent idea. I I, I appreciate the call. Oh, one other thing too. I used to drive into Boston every day on a motorcycle. Oh, how was that? Uh, talk about an experience that has a very high pucker factor. Yeah, right. Because you gotta. <laughs> 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 I imagine you, you're using you're you know basically walking on ninety three at certain points. Oh man, right? you had to grow eyeballs out of your head. Well, I take all the back roads from one thirty eight through West Roxbury, Jamaica okay. Plain, and that. Yeah. But even then, we'd be flying along the Jamaica way at 40, 50 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, that was a treat and a half. But motorcycles in Boston are, are something else. But I did that for a year or so. But uh, whew, <laughs> no more. Thank you. <laughs> well, good to hear from you, Don. I appreciate the call. Okay, Marcus. Take care, guy. I got to take a break. We'll be right back. This is South Coast Tonight. 1420 WBSM can now be heard on 99.5 FM. Um, Transitioning out of the military, it's difficult. Just about everything around you changes. I would get phone calls that brothers were dying, and some of them to suicide. And I'd found myself in another cold cemetery. And I started to wonder if I was next. It's a struggle to know that you're facing challenges, but not be ready to face them. Sleep doesn't come easy. And when it comes, it doesn't last long. You're tired all the time I didn't reach out for that help but thank God my wife did she got me registered for Wounded Warrior Project talking to somebody that would listen to me and understood my story helped me realize that it was time to change there's a new fight there's a new mission and that's something I am eternally grateful for see how we help warriors combat stigma at woundedwarriorproject.org slash combat stigma you never know who will call in the South Coast tonight. But they want to hear from you most of all. Call 508-996-0500. Or use the WBSM app to send an app, chat, text message, or leave voicemail. Welcome back to the show. I'm Marcus. 508-996-0500 is how you can join me. We've been talking about, if you're just tuning in, the end, the abrupt end of DATCO... Um, bus service to uh, from the south coast to Boston. The very last, it's a big story, it's a statewide story, um, but it's the very last um, the very last direct link, transit link right now that was available from this region to Boston. Sorry. I need to drink a lot of water. <laughs> I need to drink a lot of water for this job. Talking a lot makes you thirsty. <laughs> so, um <laughs> so um because uh Ben Burke, I, I talk, he, he, on uh, the public's radio, he pointed this out. Peter Pan Ended their busing from Bo- fall over to Boston at the, height of, uh, at the height of COVID. Taunton did the same thing. Uh, Taunton had the same um, Bloom bus or something. Had the same service ended directly to Boston. So it was just New Bedford and Datco. And I knew people that took Datco. They took the back Datco bus. Chris McCarthy took the Datco bus, actually. So... Um, I, I think a vital service lost, but there is still South Coast Rail. The question is, is when, you know, is there going to be something in the interim that's going to make up for that service for South Coast commuters? 65 people a day is nothing, right? 65 people per day is nothing. And... That option still should be available. You know, you, you've heard people that not only need to get to work, but you, you know, you was reading the New Bedford Light. Someone's got to. Someone has to go there to get chemotherapy. And look, 
I'm not saying DACO had to keep their service there in perpetuity, right? I understand that they're guided by the profit motive and they have to make money doing whatever they're doing, providing that bus service. And they were not making money. Apparently, well, they said they're not making money. They, they said they weren't making money. And so they were losing money. They were operating at a deficit that is no longer viable for them. So I guess they have to cut that contract. But I think once you start providing that service, there should be an obligation to see it through until an alternative is being proposed. I just feel like if you are a private company operating at a, operating a, a public good, like trans, like public transportation, there has to be certain obligations. And I know under the law there are certain obligations for certain things. But there has to be a certain obligations, I think, for continuity of service. And maybe this, maybe companies like DACO and Peter Pan shouldn't be carrying out this service anyway. Maybe the MBTA should have its uh, have a busing division. Maybe that's a good allocation of the money from the uh, fair share amendment is going into something like that, building out more public transportation. 508-996-0500 is how you can get in the program. We'll also take your messages on the WBSM app chat. I'm going to take a break. We'll be right back. This is South Coast Tonight. Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Marcus. 508-996-0500 is how you can get in the program. We'll also take your messages on the WBSM app chat. So, um, we've been talking about the end of bus service from DATCO, uh, for DATCO from, uh, it's the last transit link, direct transit link from this area to Boston until, of course, uh, South Coast Rail comes, which is slated in December, still leaves, you know, local commuters with about six months, <clears throat> six months or maybe more, right? April, about eight or nine months uh, without um, commuter service, which is, I think, going to be difficult for a lot of people. Uh, you know, you got to budget at least two and a half hours, I think, when you're driving up to Boston for any reason. So I think, you know, it's going to, I think South Coast Rails, and I want to talk a little bit more about the traffic problem, South Coast Rail. We can talk more about that in the second hour of the show if you want. Also open phone lines. We can talk about whatever you want at 508-996-0500. That's how you can get on the program this evening. We'll also take your messages on the WBSM app chat. So um, I'm here with you until 10, as always. And we yeah, look forward to... Look forward to... Um, look forward to talking with you in the, in the 10 o'clock, I mean, in the, in the eight o'clock, eight o'clock hour. So give me a call, shoot me a message. Uh, got another message. Another message just came in. Detco in Fairhaven is now Bloom. So I'm assuming Bloom bus took... Datco in Fairhaven. Um, that's from I am trash five oh eight. That's funny. I like that one. I am trash five oh eight. That's a good uh that's a good name. I like that. Get creative with your app chat names. All right. 508-996-0500. We're also taking your messages on the WBSM app chat. I'm going to sign off for the Eight o'clock news, and then at the end of the eight o'clock news, I will be joining you again. Give me a call, uh, you know, at right at around eight oh five. So give me a call, shoot me a message, uh, and I'm here till ten o'clock. So looking forward to hearing from you either through phone or through the app chat. <laughs>